and knowing how I'd shake sometimes. He asked if I could help explain his wife's anxiety, saying every time he tried to be her sounding board, he, in his lack of understanding, became more an object of envy while simultaneously reflecting her own disdain for the stranger she found herself exchanged for in his chest like a mirror where, for some reason, his love beat at regular intervals and normal patterns and only skipped when, and I quote, she'd beat electric fists into me like defibrillating a healthy heart while hers was under arrest and she begged him to understand, but, and I quote, I can't. And knowing how she'd shake sometimes and try to communicate through stutters when the cogs in her mind jammed and caught the wheel of another thought vying for her attention, I, oh almighty I, became more of a silver lining combined with a witch available to burn depending upon the outcome. Like maybe my tongue could breed magic that douses the fires and I quote, staked between us. They are high. And I surmised, and getting higher, maybe I'll light the match myself. I thought of my own wife and wondered if either of them knew what they'd gotten themselves into when they got into it with us. The shame compounds upon itself when all that I've begun to call God's platitudes don't help, and the shaking has given way to an anger I can't maintain, or a panic I can't suppress as a fuse, whose length you can probably guess, constantly rubbing up against strike anywhere matches, otherwise known as people. Flint so non-consensual in the flame created by the iron I like to think of myself as that they find themselves at a complete loss for how they ever got so tangled up in the tinder I actually am. The ones in closest and most consistent proximity light the fastest and burn the hottest, and as long as I continue to describe them as the spark constantly setting fire to my rope, then I can remain the victim. Alternatively, you will never cease to hear my omnipotence positioned in the phrase, Oh, so it's my fault again. And in this way, I can make certain that I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end, so omniscient in every conversation that I can feel myself slipping away as I speak, insisting that I am in my right mind. Is this making sense so far? We don't know who we are in here, I understand that, for the most part, history only celebrates martyrdom for the ones who didn't make a spectacle of lighting themselves on fire. She doesn't want your sentiments. We do not want to personify the void any more than you want to be swallowed up by us as black holes absorbing all of the light that you fell in love with when our stars were still exploding. Of course we envy the calm that emanates from the way you are able to choose which candy bar you'd like to purchase at the gas station. It's blinding. Of course we're angry when you say, well, I don't know, what would you like to share? As if we know. As if I have any idea, and if I'm already shaking because I can't make a decision between Reese's Pieces and Starburst, then how am I ever supposed to go fearless into our future with every infinite possibility lingering with chalkboard nails inside of my head? Just pick a candy bar. If I could just get it out, we might set one another free. Still, for some reason, completely unbeknownst to me, firm in my belief that the greatest gifts have been beadlet of empathy, sweat out like pores drained of their blood when the time has come to kiss in this garden, and whether it is for betrayal or passion or both beneath the dichotomy between words separated by and, you are not floating alone in this awful void, seems to retain its standing as the surefire echo of transcendence incarnate. I couldn't get out a whisper. All I managed to do was shake, but somehow I think that it was enough. Instead of burning the witch, he looked at me as if to say, I've seen that paralysis before. Mouth open as an echo chamber, I guessed that I was just empty enough for him to hear it. <laughs>